Alrighty, folks. Thanks for joining me. I've actually tried to read this straight through a couple times, and I cannot fit the 15-minute time limit, no matter what. Even just reading it straight through, and and apparently, even as I'm reading straight through, I want to try to explain how this is actually talking about the times here to come, uh, times that we're already in and to come, uh, very soon, in fact. Uh, this. Scripture has actually been given to me multiple times over the last couple months. Um, and it was given to me again a couple of days ago. Uh, along with what was given to me today. and uh, Was in Jeremiah. And more warnings in uh, chapter 25. Um, I get a lot of the same things over and over day to day that's why there's not a lot more readings I mean I, I get things every day multiple times a day about different subjects uh, regarding the warnings and prophecies though many of these uh, are repeated um, and I've explained before how I do it you know I just pray and, and uh, open up the book to where it falls and um, these repeatings these warnings are being repeated and repeated and so it's what I'm going to have to do is just post this on the Freemasonic channel. The, even reading it straight through uh, all four chapters, uh, it came out at 18 minutes. So, and that was reading fast, way too fast than I should have been reading. So it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my time reading it, and I'm going to try to uh, show you. You know, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to point to things as I read it this time. And we're just going to take a little time with it. It'll probably end up being about 30 minutes or so. We'll see how it comes out. But basically the readings, uh, the chapters are in Isaiah chapter 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. So I guess that's five chapters really, technically. So um, the, yeah, we'll just start off reading and I'll excerpt what's being referred to in the modern time now you know the scholars and this and that they'd say this is all talking about way back when uh, about uh, replying in that time period of people taking refuge in Egypt um, the thing about scripture is just like history it repeats itself and it's no scripture is referring to just back then almost every scripture in the book throughout the book is referring as well to the time of your generation of this generation particularly especially prophecy scriptures and um, the uh, Okay, so, yeah, we'll start off here. Woe to the rebellious children, saith, this is Isaiah 30 in the King James Version, of course. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsels, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. All right, here's my first reference. We know who Pharaoh is, right? Okay, Akhenaten, Benrakhenaten. Okay, he's Pharaoh. He's king right now, um, as evident. Who's the shadow of Egypt? Well, look at Washington. Look at Vatican. Look at London. Look at the Crown Corporation. And what they represent, and realize through the symbolism, uh, the pyramids, etc., uh, the all-seeing eye, the whole nine yards, is 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 extended clear back from then, is still now. So, who's the new Babylon? We are. The United States of America is Babylon, and uh, thus the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame? and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. 
They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help, nor profit, but a shame, and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south, into the land of trouble of anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper, and fiery flying serpent. They will carry the riches upon the shoulders of young asses, and their treasures upon the bunches of camels, to a people that shall not profit them. Okay. We all know the financial, economical woes and the situation thereof. The for the Egypt shall help in vain, and to no purpose. Therefore I have cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. And, as you can see, again, the reference. Now go, write it before them in a table. Sorry about drinking the coffee, but it is what it is. I'm just going to take my time with this, and I try to slam it out a couple times and obviously that was not the plan <laughs> so write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever okay again in reference to this is a time to come it's not necessarily talking about just back then forever and ever okay and then this is a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of the Lord Thus we have a nation that has turned its back on the Lord. Which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophecy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, Prophecy deceits. And there you have your Joe Osteen and, and many others. They want to, you know, the people want to hear the smooth things. They want to hear the candy Christianity. They don't want to hear about prophecy and judgment and uh, the, the price of... Uh, not paying heed to the true scripture get you out of the way turn aside out of the path cause the holy one of Israel to cease from before us and they have they've totally kicked God out of this country out of the schools out of the doctrines out of everything you know and not just the people that claim to be Christians uh, who uh, are, are thinking that Christ is here to give them riches and and live grand in the world um, again as these false teachers are out there um, preaching uh, that's not what the scripture says at all wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel before because ye despise his word and ye trust in oppression and perverseness and say thereon therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly in an instant okay and he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces he shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sure to take a fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit for thus saith the Lord God the Holy One of Israel in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength and ye would not okay he's warned there's plenty of people out here warning plenty of prophets Plenty of watchmen on the wall, you know, yelling out the warnings to people, and you and you people make fun of us and you ignore us, nevertheless. But you said no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore we shall shall we flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. Okay, you can't run from this. There is no place to hide from the new world order or any of this or judgment or anything else for that matter. There is no place on this earth to hide. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you, for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all that they that wait for him. Okay, partially this message is going to go through. It's going to talk about the protection of the Lord for his children and his peoples. And it's also at the same time talking about the judgment on the others who are not of his people, the tares. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he shall answer thee or he will answer thee. Okay, and if you dwell in Zion and Jerusalem, it's not necessarily talking about a place, a physical place, okay? It's talking about a place of your spirit, okay? 
And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And they're everywhere. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Like I said, they're everywhere. We are everywhere, trying to tell you people what's, what's going on. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as minstrel cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. And this is for the repenters. Then shall ye give, he give the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and the bread of increase of the earth, and shall, it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day thy cattle in large pastures, thy oxen likewise, and the young asses that he, ear to the ground shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and this light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. I'm talking about binding up the wheat, putting it in the barn. Okay. Those who know the scripture know what I just said. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from afar, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. And his breath, as an overflowing stream, shall reach into the midst of the neck, and the sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Ye shall have a song, as in the right, or as in the night, when the holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart, as when one goeth with, to, with a pipe to come into a mountain of the Lord, and into the mountain of the Lord, and to the mighty one of Israel. And, and see, the, the, the uh, wheat's going to be happy about this, okay, because we've been waiting a long time, for tired of seeing the deceit and the lies and the bull, bull crap going on, okay. It makes us sick. It makes me sick. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall shew the lightning down of his arm, with the indignation of his anger, and with the flame of devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, with smote with the rod. Assyrian is a term for these fakers, these general fakers, and these deceivers, the tares. And in every place, whereas the ground his staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, it shall be with tabrets and hearts, and in the battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Trophet is ordained of old, yea, the king is prepared. He hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, and the breadth of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. We go to Isaiah 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither do they seek the Lord. See, they, they go to Egypt. They go to the government for help. They go to the world for help. They're, be they're all begging the government to help them. They're all begging the wrong one. And yet he is also wise, also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will rise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Okay, there's no turning back. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God, and their horses flesh, not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth, shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they shall fail together. Okay? This is all the allies as well. Okay? And if you don't know what's going on in the Middle East and how they're all basically surrounded, Jerusalem right now, everybody, it's all, it, it's getting ready to come down, folks. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, 
when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion, and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. And let it, let it be understood, okay, the the real Jews that are still in over in Israel Israel is not is a, is a false country okay it's a Rothschild creation at this point and is mostly controlled as far as their terrorist activities and their uh, politics and stuff it's all Zionism uh, what they call Zionism and uh, it is not the true Jews okay everybody wants to blame the Jews for everything nowadays and they, and they got it all wrong they're they're the it's the fake Jews, the false Jews, the Edomites, the, uh, uh, you know, whatever name, they didn't go by many names, the Frankenists, the, uh, 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 what, Kazi, Kaz, uh, Kazi Nazis, whatever, they're, they're all fake, anyway, is the point being, and, and that's what these Satanists do, they run around and they, they'll claim to be Christians, they'll claim to be Jews, they'll claim to be, but they're Luciferians is what they are. And uh, that includes the Rothschilds, that includes Obama, that includes the, everybody in power, okay, and, and especially at this time. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword. Again, we're talking the Syrians is talking of the tares. Okay? Not of mighty man, not and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace in Jerusalem. Again, Zion is the people, is everywhere. You know, that's why it says in Zion and the hill thereof. It's talking about not just in Jerusalem, it's talking about everybody in Zion is part of the spirit of the Lord, the spiritual Jews. Okay, which, you know, nowadays under the new covenant of Jesus Christ, if you turn to Jesus Christ and He is your Lord and Savior, it didn't matter if you was a Gentile to begin with or, or what, you are now a spiritual Jew. You are in his covenant so behold again Isaiah 32 we're on now behold a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land and the eyes of them that see shall not be dim and the ears of them that hear shall hearken and the heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak plainly. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. Again, we're talking about the saved and protected at the same time, where also then we go back and forth in between them and the tares, the ones that are not saved. Okay, And for the vile person will speak villainy. And his heart will work in equity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord, to make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. But the liberal devises liberal things, and by liberal things he shall stand. Rise up, ye women that are at ease, hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, and gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you, and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. See, there won't be no babies. There won't be no uh, milk, fresh milk. Everybody, this we're, we're talking disease and famine here. This is what we're talking in here. Okay, there'll be no more food. There'll be no more growing. The droughts, the thing, the land. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous cities. 
because the palaces shall be forsaken, and the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be dens for ever, the joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. See, so the here we have the judgment at the same time we have the righteousness and protection so if you're of the if you're of the lord you have to stay in the lord and you have to trust in him and throughout this whole thing don't worry about your food and your water and this and that when the shit hits the fan okay stay out of the throngs don't go out with the throngs and and be rioting and and fighting for over food the lord will provide you with your food and your water and your spiritual peace and protection and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Okay? And my people shall dwell in a peaceful habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Okay? When it shall hail, coming down on the forest, and the city shall be in a low, be low in a low place. Okay? So the rest of the city is going to be crazy. They're going to be going nutso. They're going to be rioting in the streets and killing each other. You're going to name it. You know, whatever's going to happen. You need to stay in the Lord and stay in your place, okay? And be assured in His faith that He will take care of you and protect you. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of oxes and of the ox and ass. Isaiah 33 Woe to thee that spoilest, and, wa and waste not, wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt treacherously not with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shalt deal treacherously with thee. In other words, you know, these people that are, are being like they are now, and they're basically going along with this game, going along with everything, you know, dealing, they're, they're spoiled, they're being, dealing treacherously with others, even though others haven't dealt treacherously with thee. They'll, t they'll try to stop. They'll try to repent. They'll try to say, oh, I, I see the error of my ways, but it won't matter. You know, it won't matter at that point. It's too late. O oh Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Okay. So those who have been patient, those who have been waiting, those who have been faithful. Our salvation in the time of trouble is him. Our protection is with him. Okay. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled, and the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high, <clears throat> Excuse me, and he hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Judgment and righteousness both at the same time. Okay. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and the strength of salvation, and fear of the Lord is his treasure. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highways lie waste. The wayfaring man ceaseth. He hath broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities, and he regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Now will I rise, saith the Lord, now will I be exalted. Now will I lift myself up, or up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff, ye shall bring forth stubble, your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up, they shall be burned in the fire. Hear ye that are far off what I have done, and ye that are near acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites, the fake, all these fake Christians and stuff, the hypocrites, those who actually sow to the world by claiming to be of the Lord. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? I'll tell you who, only the true faithful will, not the hypocrites. 
He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from the holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, those are the ones who will last. Those who will ones who will withstand the fire, just like uh, uh, what uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they had to walk into the furnace in the complete total faith, and they weren't burnt. Well, with this fire that's about to come. Have your faith. Stand in your faith. And make sure it's strong and make sure it's true. No hypocrite will stand. He shall dwell on high and his place of defiance shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him and his waters shall be sure. Again, here's what I said earlier. Once, once you are in that place where you need to be under his protection, you, your food will be get provided. Your waters will be provided. You'll get your your waters will be cleansed. It'll be like, it, you know, who knows? I, I can't say for sure, but I mean, literally, I see it like miracles like Jesus performed in his day. Okay? It will literally be transformed. Dirty water will be transformed through prayer right before your very eyes with the blessings. I bless everything I consume anyway on a daily basis, whether it be, you know, water, uh, food, whatever, because the the food, you know, well, I don't even get into that. We know what condition we're in right now. We know what condition the world is in. Most of us do, that are even listening to this in the first place. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our Solomonites. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem in a quiet, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. Thy tacklings are loosed, they could not dwell, or could not well strengthen their mast, they could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of the great spoil divided, the lame take the prey. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. See, he skips, this skips verses. One verse is talking about the saved, the other verse is talking about the wrath. The next verse is talking about the saved, the other, you know, I, I, I'm not ignoring my pointing of the thing, but anyway, the other would be talking about the saved, you know. All this comes at once, while while they're being while it's being torn down, we'll, the saved will be lifted up, and not like lifted up in the sky and pulled out of here like some pre-trib rapture. You know, hate to tell you folks, but you're going to be here for most of this. Okay, it, you may be pulled out right before the very end of the true suffering, but uh, you're going to see a lot of this. You're already seeing a lot of it come to pass and the building up of it. Come near, ye nation. Oh, we're on Isaiah 34 now. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken. Ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. Okay, this, the whole world, the entire world. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. Their stinks shall come up from their out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. It would be it'd be so much it will run like rivers. Okay, you know what water does to a mountain and it, uh, over you know uh, anyway. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down, and the leaf. Fall it as the leaf falleth from from the vine, and as a fallen fig from the tree fig tree, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven, 
Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood and is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with him and the bullocks and the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into primstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day, the smoke thereof shall go up for ever, from generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Okay. Now those who want to talk about this is of the past. This is talking about the past. This, it, this verse right here proves that this is talking about a time to come. Okay. None of the past. And this is obviously it, it shall not be quenched night or day. Burning pitch night or day not quench the smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation it will lie like waste none shall pass through it what does that what does that nuclear holocaust does that folks that's what does that okay we're talking lands that are laid waste from generations and generations and generations of time we're talking about radiation we're talking about nuclear holocaust but for the cor cormorant and the bittern, bittern shall possess it, and the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles, and in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an inhabitation of dragons, and a court for the owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts on the island of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place to rest. See these guys love their owls so much. <laughs> uh. Anyway, sorry. Uh, please excuse my. Uh, there shall be the great owl that make her nest and lay and hatch and the gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast a lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever from generation to generation. They dwell therein. Okay. I'm talking about hell, basically, right there. And um, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and include this because... Uh, and let me see if I'm going to include this or not. All right, I will include it. It's it's just one chapter I was given today, and uh, it's in Jeremiah. Twenty-four. Since we're here, and we're going, and it's it's all relevant. All the scriptures that I've been getting lately are all connected. No matter what book they've been, they've been in almost every book over the last couple months. Uh, Jeremiah twenty-four. The Lord shewed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, as I like to pronounce it, king of Babylon, okay, and that's, you know, the same person here that we was talking about earlier, Pharaoh, Babylon, uh, you know, it's the same thing. This is the, the modern day Nebuchadnezzar, the modern day Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah uh, and the son of Jehoiakim 
king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and the smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are in first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou see, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs very good, and the evil very evil. They cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their own good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them, and not pull them down, and I will plant them, and not pluck them up. And I will give them a heart to know me, and that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Okay. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely thus saith the Lord. So will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princesses, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. I will send the sword, the famine, the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and their fathers. Okay? Get right with the Lord, folks. Get right now. If you have no desire to get right, then your DNA is not in your DNA. You weren't made to get right. You were made to be a terror uh, to begin with. And, and I'm sorry. Nothing I can do for you. We cannot save those who will not be saved. However, there are many who are just lost, and they were of the Lord to begin with, just like He chose us to begin with. The Lord gave us to Jesus to begin with, before this started. And we was, you know, some of us was, or are with Him now, and will stay with Him. Many of you are lost in these churches and these other deceitful things. Hear this word. Read the word for yourself. Read the book for yourself. Understand the truth of the word not this candy apple ass preachers that talk about Jesus is here to give you everything you desire that's a bunch of crock of crap you're supposed to pick up the cross okay and I don't mean a real cross like that symbol of the cross and stuff in fact if you're wearing a cross around your neck I'd take it off if I was you okay it's not of Jesus okay seriously and uh, the last thing Jesus wants to see is a freaking cross believe me Okay, he wants to he wants to see your heart in his in his heart. That's what he wants to see. No symbols, no idols, no crap. Okay, the cross means nothing. No, it means it's what it stands for is the sun. If you must know, it's it's a, it's another injection into the church. And why anybody would want to carry a cross around? with what they hung Jesus on, your God on, in the first place, I have no idea. It doesn't even make sense. Just like uh, people seem to have a problem understanding a lot of things about Jesus. But I'm not going to get into a long episode about this because I'm going to keep on point with this message. And um, if you're listening to this, that means the Lord is calling you. Hear the call. He is calling everyone right now because He is gathering us up. Because this is about to go down. Okay, and I'm not giving no time frames here. It's not about time. Uh, in my world and in Jesus' world, the time is not like you people measure it with your New Year celebrations and your uh, revolving of the sun and all this and that that you think is is real. Which is you know again that's another subject. But never mind. <laughs> never mind all that. I I tend to get off on tangents. I thank you for listening, and may you hear the call. And Lord bless you. Lord bless you all. Thank you.